Please pray with me. Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. Psalm 139. Whether we have been essential workers or people charged to work from home and practice social distancing in these last four months, all of us have been stressed and worried. A world pandemic, economic uncertainty, and social upheaval are deeply stressful realities. That is why it is so refreshing and inviting to hear the words of Psalm 139 this morning. Psalm 139 invites us to join a speaker who is marveling over creation and its creator. A speaker who describes humanity's place, our place, in the grace and majesty of God's universe. The psalmist who wrote these psalms over 5,000 years ago understood humankind's prayers and needs and spiritual rhythms. Our psalmist recognizes that for human beings, there are times for journeying and times for resting. You trace my journeys and my resting places, the psalmist says to God. And we say the same. Whether we are in a place of fierce work and struggle, a rugged journey, or a place of stillness and refreshment, a resting place, God stays close to us. It's striking to have our first reading, Jacob's story in the wilderness, paired with Psalm 139 this morning. For Jacob is also in a resting place, a place outdoors, set apart from other people, a place of emptiness, wilderness, and open sky. The next day will hold momentous demands and opportunities for Jacob. But in this part of the story, Jacob sets himself apart in stillness and solitude and enters a state of deep rest and deep dreaming. We're told his dream, he dreams of a ladder stretching from earth to heaven and sees angels ascending and descending on that ladder. It's a moment of holy insight for Jacob and the mark of a holy place. In the stillness and in the dream, Jacob comes to understand that God cares for him and will help him to prosper. Jacob's heart gets refreshed and he realigns himself. He comes back to himself. He comes to believe that his own future can contain blessings. The resting place gives Jacob an opportunity for spiritual transformation and renewal. And that is why Jacob builds an altar in that place. In the midst of great intensity, turning aside to a refreshing resting place can bring us a new perspective and a new opportunity for grace. We sometimes live life as if the only good choice is to keep a tight grip on everything, keeping our hands clenched for the challenges and the struggles. Life can be hard, particularly in a pandemic, and we need to be prepared for the struggles when they come. But finding resting places and setting time aside for rest and prayer and play is also essential. Jesus himself models this choice for us over and over again in the Gospels. Again, again, in times of great intensity, Jesus sets himself apart and takes himself to a resting place. In Luke chapter 5, we learn that Jesus' healing ministry is making him famous and that great crowds of people were flooding in to meet him and to be healed by him. 
Hundreds and hundreds of people were flocking to him. But in that intensity, we're told that he frequently withdrew to the wilderness to pray. And in Matthew chapter 14, scripture tells us that Jesus sends the multitudes away and goes up to a mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was still there, alone. Mark records another time when early in the morning, when it's still dark, Jesus leaves the apostles and the other disciples, gets up, and slips out to a solitary place to pray. Resting places are essential to Jesus, they're essential to Jacob, and they're essential for us. It can be hard to relax during a pandemic, but resting is holy work. It isn't a frivolous or an empty practice. For more than 5,000 years, God's people have known the wisdom behind offsetting essential work with essential rest. And even essential workers should not be essential all the time. So I wonder where will we find our resting places in July and August this year? Where will we find room to empty ourselves, to be open to rest and refreshment, to allow spiritual insights and grace to find us in a quiet moment? We're all traveling less because of the pandemic, but I hope some of us will still find time a day or a week or more to unwind on ocean beaches or rest near freshwater ponds, to walk in a wood or hike in the mountains, to give ourselves over to meandering and to paying attention to the extraordinary beauty of the created world. We don't even have to travel far to find a resting place. It could be a space in our own garden or a favorite corner of a local park. It might be walking down an unfamiliar street in our own town and keeping an eye out for beauty in cloud formations, in vegetation, in an unexpected bird or chipmunk. Marcel Proust, one of the most influential writers of the 20th century, also knew that resting places were recognized by the one who was seeking rest and did not need to be exotic. Proust wrote, the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeing new landscapes, but in having new eyes. So people of St. Andrews and people of St. Michael's, no matter how demanding your days are in 2020, I invite you to find time for rest and refreshment. Join your prayer with the prayer of the psalmist. God, you trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. Amen.